The girls have just flown in yesterday, had a good rest, and now they want to just get in touch with the apparatus. So the idea would be to do parts, uh, some combinations, some dance and whatnot. Our big concern now is how to improve the execution scores between now and Worlds. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks coaches, judges, gymnasts. Uh, thinking back to where, you know, I came into the camp last summer um, before the Pan Am test event and the Commonwealth Games camp and I really think we've come a long way since then. Okay. Well the camps, camps before our big competitions, we, we seem to always have them and not only because uh, uh, it's, it's simulating a competition experience but it's good for them to know uh, what the rest of the national team is up to and, and to cheer each other on. Uh, typically our, our national camps either have uh, one of two purposes. If it's uh, more uh, in between a major competition it would be to do skill development or, or just a chance for the girls to get together and see how each other is doing. The other purpose is it's a bit of a verification situation for all of the girls because we're still finalizing uh, which team members would do certain events and, and definitely the order. It always can change because we could have an injury, for example, which we hope would not happen, but those types of things, or, or there could be an athlete that's struggling with a skill and we may decide that for, for the betterment of the team, you know, a different order or a different decision might have to be made. I'm doing every line. <laughs> Coming fifth as a team for Canada was the highlight, um, so we were ecstatic with that. We had all been obviously working so hard to get to that point and, and we just kept going and kept going and kept exceeding expectations. And We knew that once we made the team final, that was our goal. We, met, we had met our objective. We had nothing to lose by going out there in the team final. We said, you know, look, we, there's nowhere to go but up from here. We went and enjoyed it and, and hit all our routines and it was incredible. Everything seemed to align itself perfectly for Canada to have a great performance. And I remember standing looking up at the, the scoreboard. It was really sort of unbelievable. We were all looking up there saying, well, is, can this really be true? I think it's, it's showing uh, that we do have the potential to be in the top eight, top five in the world. I don't think we could have asked for a better day and I, I think it set us up for a great future of Canadian gymnastics. Come on, Ellie. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Low. If your free hip is close to the bar, you're going to spin faster, it's going to be likely to be over this way, right? So if it feels close, you've got to be more aggressive in opening because you're going to have less time to do it. Well, like it was so close that it like was like a whippy one, it didn't go well. After Olympics, um, I, I knew I wanted to stick around for a bit because I'd, I'd come up, I hadn't had competed at any really big competitions before, so I felt like I wasn't at my potential and I wanted to experience some of those bigger competitions out there like the World Championships and the Pan Am Games, Commonwealth Games, Pacific Rim. So um, I decided that I wanted to stay and, and still train and compete uh, for Canada. I've gotten to go to so many incredible places and, and compete at incredible competitions with these amazing athletes so I couldn't have you know been more happy with that decision. Oh, God. Come on. Come 
tell us we're this much too far this way. A little bit until so you came a little bit close. And I'm sure that felt really close compared to your other ones, right? But in reality, it was... No, no, it's okay. And so that's where you want to be. If you're kind of bit this way, it's a little bit close. And so not always living on the edge of get, or missing or just barely catching, but if it's normal, then you're right there. If it's a little close, it's right here. If it's a little far, it's a far catch. So if you can keep them going like that, it'll be perfect and you'll catch 90%. That one is really, really important. So even if you miss everything else for the rest of the day, I haven't seen one like that in a long time. Ellie came out of nowhere because she had the ability to contribute to the team with a with a 15 on the vault if she put her hands down she still might score higher than someone that wiggled on the beam she had a lot to offer the team but she she came through the national open program which would be very similar to level 10. of course i think ellie you know brings a lot because she was one of the youngest ones and the least experienced when we started to prepare for the olympics in london and having gone through that it was a very positive environment and now you know Ellie basically has a lot of experience from her you know past few years as a, as a gymnast and she encourages and offers a lot of that I think it's sort of a mentorship that will now be perpetual it'll just be passed down from leader to leader. Training towards last Olympics in 2012, I wasn't really a part of the qualification towards qualifying a team for the Olympics. Since then, she's, she's had a lot of success, and so she's turned into a, a real leader on the team. And It's very new to me, as well as everyone else. I still have the experience, but you know I've never been a part of qualifying a team for Olympics, so it's very exciting for me. Is there a name for that? The bum hops. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Forward. 360. Side and side. Bum hops. That's about it. I already did a line of those. Whew. Butt hops. So this camp, we're really working on, you know, getting used to coming together as a team, training together, training with the team coaches, making sure everyone's comfortable with that. It's tiring, but it's good. Dance and artistry was something that I struggled with for quite a bit when I was younger. I mean, I had uh, lots of male coaches, so it's, it's not always easy if that's not their forte. Um, so definitely going to camp, getting them to work with me on my artistry, my flexibilities, we're just basically getting all the help we can. For me, uh, I have always loved getting help from all coaches in Canada. Um, that's something my coaches really pushed me towards doing is you know, when you're at a different camp, when you're training with other athletes, really getting their coaches to look at your routines, give you any tips you can, you can get. Um, hopefully it will help your gymnastics. So that's something we really try and do is uh, work with all the coaches you can and, and get as much feedback as possible. Speaking of that, I'll go stretch. <laughs> We can put closer if you don't like it, we open it, okay? Uh, Bella, you can go again. Vic, she take her time. A little would take some rest and she would try another routine. The last one. I like to tell her what this, like, uh, okay, if you're not perfect, you can stay on. You can still stay on. Yes, yeah. because she likes to be perfect, you know. Yes. Think about it. Not try to be to perfect, stay but stay on. Yeah. It can't yeah. always oh, no, be perfect. I, I can't explain in English, but just that said, if you're not perfect, she must try to stay on. you got to fight to stay you on. Know, because this is our problem sometimes. Okay.
Well, I think what happens is we want to make sure that we stabilize and improve execution. The main thing is, is that's where we can make the most progress now. We know the girls up until our nationals, which was last May, uh, we've really put an emphasis on in increasing D-score and the girls were very successful, especially on the vault and bars and improving the D-score. Uh, this focus on, on execution has been the message that's been coming down from Dave Brubaker, the national team director. The change from, from Kena, who was our last uh, national team director, to Dave Brubaker now, it hasn't been that big of a change. And I think Dave is a very good leader for, for the camp. Like he, He's right, he makes decisions sometimes that nobody, somebody not like it, but he's made that the gymnasts push more each other. He always thinks like, eh, hey, what was becoming, and that's good. You know, we really had to look again, like I said, at rebuilding and the younger generations. One thing that I was concerned about was, you know, what's going to happen in the years to come. So I knew we wanted to take care of the needs of the athletes we have currently. Our goal is to make top eight at Worlds this year, and if we can do that, it's a, a much nicer schedule up until the Olympics. We fall short of that goal at the World Championships, then that means then we have to go to the test event in the spring and then try again to make the, the top four at the test event. And it's, it's a much different schedule and maybe more more pressure and uh, so we want to avoid that we, we will be prepared if, if we have to do that but it, it would be better preparation for the Olympics I think uh, if, if we were if we made it this time. I'm sure we're capable of doing it and so we have to just do whatever we can from now until world championships to be confident to be steady and to to give ourselves the best chance at worlds. That, that's what's motivating you know, a lot of coaches right now, that's what's motivating a lot of athletes. So now our strategy is from now until the world's to stabilize everything as much as possible. We have a very clear plan um, that they need to execute in their gyms on a day-to-day -day basis in preparation for events. And, and now with the judges here, we're going to put them through a test and, and see where we can make the most progress between now and the competition in Pan Ams and then plan forward for the world's. Maddie, are you going to do first half again? Okay, yeah. so on all of your circling, even on free hip, like you're controlling it because you're, you're less tired here, but you're just taking your chest, you're like this, you're trying to work it up. Just let it swing. Keep your shoulders back. Okay, just feel the bottom of the swing. Toes on, a little bit longer. Push, turn, turn. Good. All right. Okay. It's a bit more normal. You're still... You waited a little bit too long on the toe on, but that's okay. A little bit more. Toes on. That's better. Toes on. Yeah, a little sooner. Toes on, press, turn. That's better. Yeah? Okay, so the fourth one was the right timing. Yeah? The other ones were a little bit too late. It's just a bit about the timing. It's not about what you can and can't do. And you like to be ready to go and go, which is great, but that's why we're doing this today. Tomorrow, ready to go, because you know what the bars feel like, okay? Some of you uh, obviously had some problems today, but you, you were able to work through them, and I think everyone's confidence is going up. I was really pleased to see everyone supporting each other like a team. I think if we put the objectives of the team first, all of the other details will just fall into place and we'll have some great outcomes in the future, okay? I've got a proposed order, just we'll do this tomorrow. Um, so I'll give you guys a copy of this and you can look it over. The main thing is we'll have a look at where we are tomorrow so we know um, what we need to do in the days to come to be ready for the competition. But then I'll ask the judges to come in the afternoon and we'll work on details, okay? So what are you guys looking at? We're looking at the order for tomorrow, the mock meet. Um, meet Maddie, are you happy with that? Yeah. That's exciting. So different how like, I wonder if the mechanisms for college like is so different than the ordering here. Like we always like anchor, like you know what I mean? It's cool. I got it. So is this the first time you guys have seen the order? Yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of what was expected. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Begin. Did anyone get a salad? Wow. I'm impressed. 
Nobody had salad. Yeah, everyone has salad for lunch. Yeah. And I've had salad yesterday too for lunch and dinner. If you could eat anything you want, chocolate. Chocolate. I don't like cake or like dishes. You don't like cake? You don't like cake. You always want to do better. You always want to go in and, and hopefully uh, beat what you did last time. So I think it's pushing all the Canadian athletes to increase their difficulty, work a lot harder, and hopefully get back there at, at Olympics. We'll talk about the training. A uh, few rough edges still to smooth out. We can't march into that gym and get smaller. We have to march in there ready to do the job and get bigger and better, stronger, faster.